Hi. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> Can you hear me? No. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Can you hear me? I can now. Okay. I had my computer on mute. I'm sorry. Jeez. How are you? I'm doing better, thank you. I've missed you. Huh? I've missed you. I've Aww. missed you too. I miss everybody. <laughs> it gets you out of sorts, doesn't it? Yes, it does. When your routine changes so much. Uh -huh. Is it warming up there, Neil? Well, today, no. Mm. Tomorrow is supposed to be warmer. It's windy and cold today. We've been kind of windy and cold the last two days, but today is supposed to get up to about 70, and the sun is out, so I'll take that. Yeah, the sun's out here. I just sent Shauna... A little list. We're going to talk about sugar today. Okay. I sent her a list if she gets the chance to print it out for you. It's all the different names that you can find on products at the grocery store Bye. Bye. that are disguised, that is really sugar in disguise. So it's just a list for you. Oh, okay. Because You'd be surprised. There's so much sugars in everything. It's yeah. ridiculous. Yeah. I have a surprise for you. Oh, really? Uh-huh. Oh, you. The girls started laying this week. Change station down. Oh, your duck egg. Yep. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> your black duck egg. Yeah. They got to come around. Oh, my gosh. Look at that. <laughs> no, the, my, fir the first one they lay of the season is always this dark. I'll be darn. And then as the season goes, it'll start fading. So like oh. later in the week. Oh my gosh. Oh. It's a light gray. So it'll be about this color the rest of the season. And then at the end of the laying season, about October, it'll be just barely gray. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. And what color is your duck? Black and white. <laughs> oh, like a, like a cow. Mm -hmm. I've got my two black and white girls both lay dark colored eggs like this. Okay. My brown ducks and my beige ducks no. all lay kind of an off-white. And I've got one that sometimes hers are a little... Um, Ready? Greenish. They're kind of a light green tint. But the the black girls are the most distinctive. Uh-huh. I, I think it looks like it got painted with chalkboard paint. Isn't that neat? Oh, thank you. Oh. Thank you, Shauna. I, I have it right here. How are you? And what's funny is the coloring. I could sit here and scratch it off. You, oh, wow. It comes off, and if, when you crack it open, it's white on the inside. Oh, okay. <laughs> so it's just a coat, a color that they put on the outside when they lay it. <laughs> it's really funny. Yeah, that is neat. Oh. Our poor geese are really looking for some water. We still have ice on the lakes. No, no. <laughs> Do you ever gather, are these the wild geese or geese that you raise? Wild geese. Because yeah, goose eggs are really good to eat as well. Ah, but I like to see the little guys born. So. <laughs> I do too. Well, I've only had one of my ducks ever go broody on me. And she had a nest of about 10 eggs. And a snake got in the coop and got a couple of them. And then it was she decided to sit on the nest in the hottest part of the summer. Aww. And it was extraordinarily hot that summer. And so they just they didn't make it. It was just it was too much heat for them. 
Uh, Poor babies. Wow. Yeah, so I didn't have any hatch out at all. Yeah. I could tell some of them were partially developed, and then some of them never really did anything. But she's since then, she has never decided to sit on the nest again. So <laughs> we did see a robin Monday. Oh, did oh, you look okay. outside here when we were leaving, Connie? Uh, <laughs> is that the sure sign that spring is? Yes, yes. I saw a robin when it was snowing. Oh, that's <laughs> he was just a wishful thinker. <laughs> wow. He was the optimist of the group. <laughs> kind of like if you do a rain dance, maybe it'll rain. But well, the robin thought, well, maybe if I get out here, spring will come. <laughs> we'll get rid of this mess. The sheet that Shauna handed you is um, just a list of different ways that sugar can be found on ingredients when you're at the grocery store. All of those different things are just a fancy way of saying sugar. Ah. And we were going to talk about sugar today because did you know that most people in our country eat almost 220 pounds of sugar a year. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Even if you are saying, I'm not putting sugar in my tea or I'm not putting sugar in my coffee. And yeah, it's in everything. Yeah. I mean, that list shows you when you go to the grocery store, I challenge you to look at spaghetti sauce. Yes. Yeah. You know, there's 500 different varieties of spaghetti sauce at the grocery store. See if you can find one that does not have sugar in it. It just amazes me. I have found usually the store brand has less sugar in it than the national brands. Oh, I'll be darned. Yeah. So... Something to keep in mind if that's something that you need to cut back on. Well, I think we all need to cut back on sugar. Yes, we do. And I will, I would rather you eat real sugar in something than artificial sweeteners. Okay. If you, if you have to have a Coke to drink, I would rather you drink a real Coke with sugar than... A diet coke. A diet. Oh, I'll be darned. Because we'll do a class one day on like diet yes. products. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. But they actually cause you to gain weight. Really? The diet. And the research goes back to when they first started introducing diet soft drinks and products and that kind of thing. And what it is, is the way your body metabolizes it. It confuses our body and it causes um, weight to be put on instead of losing it. You know, so you think you're doing a good thing by cutting out the sugar, which theoretically you are because you want to cut out sugar, but it's counter to what you think you're doing. So we'll do a whole class one day on diet food kind of thing. I would rather you eat and drink just something more natural. But if you have to have a Coke, drink a regular Coke over a diet Coke. Or even drink half of it. You know, if you just need that taste or whatever. But... Let's talk about sugar a little bit. 220 pounds of sugar a year is what we eat. Yeah. And you know, even Two. recipes that we cook uh, for spaghetti sauce, they add a tablespoon of sugar. So, yeah. Wow. Yep. Um, it's, it's in everything. You know, I think, too, <clears throat> like when you eat out, Mm -hmm. Say you go through a drive through and you get French fries somewhere. Uh -huh. I can taste some of them have sugar in them. Really? We have, win 
Do you have Wendy's up there? Yes. <laughs> Wendy's, several years ago, Wendy's changed their French fries. And I remember getting them and I couldn't eat them. It was the new, they had just changed to the new variety. And I'm like, it tastes like somebody dipped potatoes in sugar, which potatoes being a starch, your body is going to treat like sugar anyway. Right. So it was like you were dipping sugar in sugar. And I was like, this is ridiculous. Hmm. No, I wonder if they're using it to help crisp and make them crispier. It's, I think it's m many different reasons. I think that's one to add a little crispy to it and sugar browns very easily. Mm -hmm. So you're going to get more brown color. But I also think the hidden agenda to it is sugar is very addicting. Yes, it is. And I have read things that claim that sugar is as addictive as cocaine. Wow. And so if they if they're feeding you that little bit of sugar, you're gonna, you know, their hope and intent, I think, is that you're gonna you're gonna crave their french fries. So it's gonna bring you back, you know, tomorrow to get more french fries and then again to get more french fries. And here you are thinking you're eating french fries and it's the sugar that they've added that's causing you to gain this addiction. Mm -hmm. I stay away from Wendy's because of the frosting. <laughs> I can't pass it up. <laughs> I know that that's a hard temptation, isn't it? Because if you go, you have to have one. There's like right. a written rule or something. <laughs> oh. But if, and I've had people argue with me that sugar is not addictive, but I would say go one week and have no sugar in your diet and you will tell the difference in how you feel about day three you're going to think somebody's going to need bail money because it it's akin to somebody just quitting smoking cold turkey mm -hmm. you're going to feel like a train has run over you <laughs> and backed up Wow. You are going to be irritable and you're going to have a headache and you're just going to think, you know, I've got to have a donut and get rid of this. <laughs> you really will because, but your body is detoxing it. I mean, you're having withdrawal symptoms. It's just like if you had a drug in your body and it's working its way out, your body's used to having that. And now it doesn't have it, and it's protesting. But if you can make it past day three and get to day five with no sugar in your diet, it's like the the world just opens up again, and you'll lose brain fog. You'll be you'll you will not have realized kind of how fogged your brain has been until you get past it and it'll be like, oh, wow. You know, well, more everything, <laughs> everything is clearer. You'll have more energy. You'll feel better. It's amazing. I have low blood sugar. I'm hypoglycemic. Mm -hmm. Or somebody who has diabetes is hyperglycemic. Their blood sugar is too high. And so I learned years ago, when I went to the doctor, I went because I had a headache every single day. And I told her, I said, I do not remember what it feels like to not have a headache. And so I didn't know that there was really a difference at the time that you could be hyper or hypo. Yeah. I just could tell that my blood sugar was off. And the only thing that I knew that meant your blood sugar was off was having diabetes. And so I just, my brain kind of went there and that's what I assumed I must have. And she was laughing at me. She goes, here, you're talking about thinking your blood sugar is too high 
and it's really your blood sugar is too low. And so that's when I started learning about how the sugar, whichever way you may be, how it causes your body to spike. You know, if you've eaten a piece of cake and then 30 minutes later, you're just like, <sighs> you know, how sugar makes your body do that. And she taught me, then, you know, how to eat protein to keep my blood sugar stabilized. So because what happens when I eat, if I eat a potato or anything starchy like corn or rice or bread, my body treats it just like sugar. And if I don't have protein to help sustain me, I have that same spike and crash. Just like I had eaten, you know, half a cake. So that's when I started, you know, learning about all the different things that your body treats just like you were eating sugar. Alcohol is one. Your body processes it just like sugar. Anything starchy, white flour based, whole grains a little bit, but they have all that added stuff that helps keep you sustained. So they're not quite in the same category, but anything white flour based, you know, crackers, flour, uh, bread, white rice, anything like that, corn, your body's gonna process just like you were eating sugar. Would pasta do that? If it's white pasta, absolutely. That doesn't, that has sugar? You don't, you don't Not that it necessarily has sugar, but your body processes it just like you were eating sugar. Because of all the flour. Because of the starch, right. Yeah. Wow. And Connie and I have talked before in one of our classes, there is a thing called resistant starches. And what happens... Like if you want a potato, what there's a chemical process. Like if you bake a potato and you eat it hot out of the oven, your body is going to process it one way. It's going to process that starch immediately, and it's going to be a simple starch, and it's going to process it like you ate sugar. It's going to be the same chemical process that goes through. But there's this wild thing that happens if you take that potato and you put it in the refrigerator and you heat it back up tomorrow and eat it it has changed the chemical component of the starch and has made it what they call a resistant starch and your body will process it more slowly than if you ate it yesterday fresh out of the oven oh Day-old potatoes. <laughs> Day-old potato. Well, um, if you make fried rice. What, that, will that be the same with sweet potatoes? Same with sweet potatoes. Anything starchy like that that you could cook? Um, rice? Eat a day after. Cook you it. have to refrigerate it. Refrigerate. Something in that refrigeration process changes the makeup of the starch. Oh, like, yeah. I will make rice at the beginning of the week and then put it in the refrigerator and then I can use it like for fried rice or whatever mm -hmm. later in the week. Okay. And um, I don't, I'm not a scientist, mm -hmm. so I don't know exactly what chemical reaction changes the starch, but yeah, anything like that that you can refrigerate and then eat later okay. will make it less apt to cause your blood sugar to spike or that leftover sounds onto you. I like leftovers. <laughs> I know. See? See, Grandma knew when she had leftovers every day. <laughs> you thought she was just, you know, being frugal. <laughs> but there, there's really a, a health reason 
yeah. to do leftovers. Sometimes it tastes better the day after. Yeah. Yes. With yes. everything blends yeah. together. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Um, beef stew. I'd much rather have it tomorrow for lunch than the day I make it. Mm -hmm. yeah. Or vegetable, you know, anything like that. It has exactly what she said it has time to sit there and the flavors kind of all merry and mm -hmm. wow yeah i agree there's but now you know there's a health reason to do it too yeah like if you want to make lasagna oh yeah if oh. you want it for sunday supper mm -hmm. put it together and put it in the refrigerator saturday and then you've refrigerated your pasta Yep. And made it a resistant starch instead of a simple starch. Mm -hmm. Wow. <laughs> and it, I mean, it's an easy thing to do. It's not a hard. Yeah. For me, it's hard because I don't remember it on Saturday that I want to make yeah. lasagna ahead of time and put it in the refrigerator. You've got to remember. But that yeah. works out in the summer because a lot of times we cook ahead when the kids come up. So we have more time to play with the kids and not be in the kitchen putting everything together. So exactly. Do <laughs> it. Give you a little more incentive to getting that done. Some of the reasons, going back to thinking about just the sugar, some of the reasons you want to... Other, other than obviously sugar puts weight on. You read a lot of things about fats and such. Sugar is the primary component of what puts weight on. Not fat, but sugar. Not fat. Uh -huh. Sugar. If, you're, if you go to the doctor and you have your checkup and your doctor tells you that your triglycerides are high, you know how you get them down? Put the sugar. Don't, don't eat sugar. <laughs> Cut back on the sugar. How long does it have to be in the refrigerator? Overnight. Yeah. Okay. Overnight. Change station. It doesn't. This, if it cools it for a few hours, it doesn't make a difference. No, it needs to be chilled overnight. Okay. <laughs> like thoroughly get cold, chilled. Yeah. Not just cooled down to room temperature. Okay. You okay. want it to get cold. And then reheat it. My spaghetti, I was going to make it known to eat it tonight. But no. <laughs> <laughs> I made it and known and stuck it in the freezer until tonight. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> but um, if your cholesterol is high, yeah. cut back on the sugar. Uh -huh. It's not necessarily the egg yolks and the butter. And uh, see, I was going to think oh, wow. If you cut back on your sugar, it'll go down. I have yeah. a very good friend. Um, she and I used to teach together, and she's very healthy. Yeah, she runs, she exercises. She went and she had her checkup, and her cholesterol was through the roof. And she was like, you know, she couldn't figure out what she was eating that was making her cholesterol be so high. I said, well, what do you eat for breakfast? She said, I eat oatmeal every day. You know, an oatmeal is supposed to be good for cholesterol. I said, yes, it is. I said, what do you put on your oatmeal? Mm -hmm. She said, butter and brown sugar. Because <laughs> then she says, I guess I need to take the butter off. I went, no, leave your butter. Take your brown sugar off. <laughs> and I got her to change to the coconut palm sugar yeah. that you and I have talked about. Mm -hmm. That's the only change she made. She changed from her brown sugar, her regular brown sugar, to the coconut palm sugar. Mm -hmm. And she started using, because of the taste of it, she didn't need as much. So after a week of eating it every day, she was down to maybe a half a spoon, where she had been putting like two big spoons of brown sugar. Mm -hmm. And she, when she went for her six-week checkup for her cholesterol, it had dropped 30 points. Wow. Okay. Wow. And so I made a believer out of her. I was like, you know, it's your sugar intake. If you'll change that. And she's still getting sugar in the coconut palm sugar. It's still sugar. 
but it has a higher glycemic index, is what they call it, than um, cane sugar or beet sugar. So it has all the minerals in it. If it's in the sugar world, it's the same as if you were eating whole grains versus white flour. Okay. It's got the minerals and the nutrients and everything is still intact because sugar, even cane sugar, normal sugar that you would buy in a five pound bag in the grocery store, it's not white when it's grown and processed. Mm -hmm. They have leached out. Molasses is a byproduct of making sugar. They have taken the molasses out and they're left and you're left with the white and they bleach it is why it's white. But sugar is naturally going to be brown. Right. Okay. And um, that coconut palm sugar, it still has all that good stuff in there and your body processes it much slower and it's a deeper, richer flavor. And as if you, when you get the regular sugar detoxed out of your body and you start using it, you yeah. need less of it. So you're helping your body by giving it something that's more nutritious. And then you're going to just automatically naturally start using less because everything else is going to taste so sweet to you. You can't, you know, it's just, it's going to be icky tasting if you went back and put the regular sugar on it instead. Look at our cereal aisle. That oh my goodness. One little section when we were growing up. Now it's two sides of these huge aisles of sugar. I know. And it's six and a half feet high in the air. And oh yeah. Even the cereals that are supposedly good for you, the granolas and yeah. that mm -hmm. kind of thing. Look how much sugar, how many grams of sugar are in them. Get ready for a 10 second count. Are you ready? The granola is good for you if it doesn't have all that added junk. I went to my son's house. One of the kids' favorite cereals is Frosted Flakes. <laughs> and I actually seen him put a tablespoon of sugar on his Frosted Flakes. Oh, wow. Ew. What? Oh. <laughs> well, that was basically sugar on sugar on sugar. Yeah. Because yeah. You, Frosted Flakes is corn-based. Yeah, yeah. okay. It has corn in it. And then it's got the frosting on it. And then it's added more sugar on it. Yeah. And then when you pour your milk on it, more sugar. Well, it has a the lactose in the milk is a natural sugar. Yeah. So he had a crunchy bowl of sugar. You ought to switch to my milk. I, I drink the lactose-free milk. <laughs> It'll ha that'll have a little bit less. And I'm not saying that the sugar in milk is bad, but when you've compounded it on top of sugar on top of frosting on top of corn, oh. you know, <laughs> your poor body just, okay. sugar is also the primary reason we get joint pain. Oh, really? It causes inflammation in your body. And if you reduce the sugar that you eat, your inflammation will go down and you'll have less pain. I was in excruciating pain several months ago, maybe a year ago, and I could not figure out why. And I figured out I had been drinking orange juice every morning for breakfast. I mean, it was to the point that my knees and ankles were just like knives in them. It hurt. I laid there in bed and cried at night. It just, I hurt. They were on fire. They hurt, they ached, I was miserable, but I had been drinking a glass of orange juice with breakfast every morning for about two weeks. I quit drinking the orange juice, and within three days, that went away. And I love orange juice, and 
So now when I drink it, I drink just a teeny tiny bit and I only have it once in a blue moon, you know, very rarely do I have it. It's not worth it to me. I know what it, and that's what it was. It was just the inflammation that the sugar, even though I was using a natural squeezed orange juice, you know, that's all juice and whatever, yeah. just the natural sugar in it was enough that my joints did not like it at all. They protested. Now, now can, can you eat uh, an orange and it, have it do the same thing? I can eat an orange, and I think it's the difference that, because when I eat an orange, I just eat one. And you think about how many oranges it takes to squeeze to make a glass of juice. Yeah. would be like five or six oranges. So if I ate five or six oranges every day for two weeks, I think it would be the same effect. Mm -hmm. But I think it's the quantity because juice is so concentrated. Mm -hmm. You know, you think you're drinking one glass, but it's really, you know, how many oranges are in that? So one of those you have to, you don't think you're eat, drinking and eating sugar, but Mm. You really are. Um, plus portion control to make sure you're not, you know, overdoing even the ones that you think that are good for you. Exactly. Exactly. I get so frustrated because of the media and all everything you see online and advertisements. You know, this is good for you. This, mm -hmm. But when you go and you look at the ingredients, it's not any better than the other garbage that's in the cereal aisle or whatever. Yeah. And they charge you twice as much to tell you it's better for you. And it's just more expensive garbage. <laughs> yes, definitely. <laughs> you know, I get, I get frustrated. And I think it makes it confusing to people because it's so overwhelming. If you shop the outside aisles and don't go in the middle, then you're getting all the fresh fruits, vegetables. And exactly. You're getting the more natural. Right. Sometimes I say eat it more like God created it. Right. Yeah before man decided he was going to make it better and <laughs> screwed yeah. it up. But she's exactly right. If you eat the outside, you start off in the produce aisle. You kind of have to watch. They've put the deli and the bakery in the outside. Yeah, the bad <laughs> thing. Because you leave the fruits. and I know in our local grocery store, you come into the fruits and vegetables. Mm -hmm. and you go then directly into the deli and bakery mm -hmm. and then you go directly into it like if I'm just going the outer perimeter then you get into the um, the package sandwich meat and all that kind of stuff yeah and that has as much sugar in it as the spaghetti sauce and the cereal and all that stuff <laughs> uh, you know, and besides the sugar, it has all the preservatives, the nitrates and the nitrites and all that cancer causing stuff. So even going the perimeter of the grocery store anymore, you sort of have to hop, skip and jump. Yeah. <laughs> and you can't, you can't do a straight line anymore. No. You get used to a store of where not to go and you go in a month later and they've rotated it again. Yep. Mm -hmm. They'll rearrange it. Yeah. They will rearrange it. Yeah. So then you find yourself going down an aisle that you normally wouldn't and oh look at that. Maybe I'll try it. <laughs> exactly. They get us that way. They get us that way. And there's also a psychology to the music that they play. Oh when you're in the grocery store. Did you know that? No. There's a, they play different styles of music based on the time of day and who 
um, surveys show shops during different times of day. And the music has a psychological effect on your mood and how you buy and what you buy and how much of it you buy. Now move away from your wow. It's all a racket. Yeah. Yeah. So that's why I love spring. It's April now and our farmer's market opens in two weeks. And so I'm so excited. And I have my garden tilled. I'm ready to start planting. I started my broccoli seed. I was going to ask you about that. How, how For my broccoli sprouts? They're up probably maybe almost an inch. Okay, what did you do? I I put mine in water and they, they broke open, but that, that they aren't doing anything. I did, um, I took a container, I had bought blackberries, and so it was one of those just little thin plastic okay. you know, clamshell containers that mm -hmm. has the holes in the bottom for air. Okay. And I lined it with paper towel. I just folded up a paper towel four times and it was the exact size of it. Uh -huh. And I soaked my paper towel with water and I sprinkled my seeds on it and then closed the lid so it was like a little mini greenhouse. Okay. <laughs> and then every day I just opened the lid and I let water run through it and drain out and I closed my lid back. So it wets my paper towel because I don't want them sitting in water, they'll rot. Okay. But it keeps the moisture in there on the paper towel, and so they've sprouted, and they're about an inch tall now. Wow. Oh. <laughs> okay. And they probably haven't grown in three or four days, so I'm wondering if they're done, if I need to put them on my sandwich or my salad now. Change stations now. We're trying to get sprouts. You know, like bean sprouts. Yeah. You know? uh -huh. And they, I've heard on the doctors, I heard that the sprouts from broccoli are better for you, more nutritious than the grown up. Plants. Oh, I'll be darned. That's what we're trying to do is get the sprouts. We're trying to sprout our broccoli. <laughs> <laughs> wow. It's a new, I had bought the seeds last year but never tried anything. And then, yeah. Connie mentioned it again, and I was like, oh, I need to try that. So we're kind of, <laughs> we're trying it out to see how it works. I'll have to try your way. I would find something that you can drain easily. And I just put mine on the window seal in the kitchen so they get plenty of light. Yeah. I just set them up there, and then it's right there, and I remember to run the water through them every day. Uh-huh. And let them drain good. Just don't let your paper towel dry out or your okay. seedlings will dry out. Dry out. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, we're going to leave you. You have a good day. <laughs> Thank you for joining us. <laughs> Y'all have a great day. Be careful. Are you going to leave too? I don't even know what time it is. I'm I've got a couple more things on sugar if you want to hear them. Okay. If not, we'll wait till next week. It's up to you. I, I don't know what your time is. I'm good. It's after 11. I'm okay. I don't think Shauna has, some, as long as she doesn't have somebody else that has a class scheduled for 11 o'clock. Um, part of sugar... The different things that sugar can affect of your health, it can cause eczema, any you know, skin conditions and rashes and all could be um, too much sugar in the diet. Uh, during pregnancy, it can cause toxemia. You know, pregnant women always have to go take that glucose tolerance test okay. to make sure their sugar is not too high because it can cause issues. Um, we already talked about triglycerides going up. It can make you sleepy, drowsy, kind of lethargic, lazy. It can cause food allergies.
it can cause migraines and headaches in general. It can get your hormones out of whack, off balance. It can cause hypertension. And hypertension is the leading cause of heart disease. So there's a correlation there. Hypoglycemia we talked about. Um, it can damage your kidneys. It can contribute to hyperactivity, anxiety, depression. Change stations now. It can contribute to osteoporosis. Um, weight gain, we talked about. It can have effect on your blood platelets and can cause blood clots. It can affect the chemistry of your blood. It increases the fat in your liver. Someone who has fat, a fatty liver, it's not because they've eaten fat, it's because if they've eaten sugar. Sure. Mm -hmm. My mother-in-law died of non-alcoholic cirrhosis of the liver. She had full-blown cirrhosis. She had never drunk a drop of alcohol in her life, but she, had, she was diagnosed with a fatty liver years ago. And I don't think we ever did convince her that it was because she ate candy nonstop. Wow. It was that her body was processing the sugar just like it would alcohol and vice versa. And she ended up with sugar naturally. Does, is it... Does the body process it differently? It doesn't necessarily process it differently. It's still sugar. Yeah. And you still need to watch the quantity that you eat. Okay. Your benefit is you're getting more of the natural minerals and fiber and from whatever you're naturally eating. Like an apple. Don't eat a bushel of apples right. at a time, but an apple a day is fine. Exactly. Exactly. You're still getting sugar from the apple, but you're also getting the other good things. You're getting the pectin and the fiber and the vitamins and such. Where, like, if you drank apple juice, yeah. you're, you've eliminated some of that good stuff from the apple. Okay. So it's still sugar, but it's your body's not going to spike and drop like if you were eating spoonfuls of sugar. Okay. Um, sugar can cause your body to retain fluid. Really? And get a deep. Salt does. Yep. Sugar does too. Yep. And did we talk about, when we talked about salt, did we talk about, because we talked about um, using sea salt, mm -hmm. because like if you get the Morton salt that doesn't clump, mm -hmm. it's because they've put a compound in there, an ingredient that absorbs the moisture okay. to keep it from clumping. So when you eat that salt, you're eating that moisture absorbing ingredient and that's why regular salt will make you retain fluid more than eating the sea salt now the sea salt has added minerals and other good things in it as well that's bleached out of regular white salt but they that's why you shouldn't eat any salt that doesn't lump up when it's humid outside. Oh, okay. It's because that additive they put in there to absorb the moisture and keep it from clumping. Because when you eat it, it's absorbing moisture in the salt. It does the same thing in your body. Okay. So salt itself does not. 
Right. It's not necessarily the salt okay. itself. It's that ingredient in the white salt. And they don't put it usually in the sea salt and such. Okay. So, there you go. But yeah, sugar can cause you to, it causes inflammation and can cause you to retain water as well. Um, it increases, sugar increases your risk of coronary heart disease, Crohn's disease, ups your cholesterol. It can interfere with your um, body absorbing calcium and magnesium. It can lead to tooth decay. Okay, yeah. Um, it can lead to an acidic stomach, heartburn, and acid reflux. It can speed the aging process and cause wrinkles. And it weakens your um, immune system against infections. It's a, we like it and it tastes good, but it doesn't really do us any favors when we eat it. What about chocolate? Well, that's what, that's one reason that we talk about eating the dark chocolate because it has less sugar in it and it has less. Okay. Chocolate itself does not have sugar in it. Right. Chocolate in its pure state does not have sugar in it. Okay. They add the sugar. And so that's why we say eat dark chocolate instead of milk chocolate. Yeah. Because the milk chocolate has all the added sugar and milk to it. Okay. Yeah. All right. And sometimes you can see the bars of chocolate and it will tell you what percent cocoa it is. The higher that percent, the more pure chocolate it is and less sugar in it. Okay. So you want for dark chocolate, you want to try and get 70% or higher. I have a couple of bars in my freezer because I always keep mine in the freezer. I do too. I have a couple of bars that are 100% cocoa or cacao. Now, I wouldn't go eat a bite of it. I use it for like baking chocolate or whatever. Yeah. But it's really bitter if you eat it. Um, I like dark chocolate, and I've always liked really dark chocolate, but that's really, really dark chocolate. <laughs> it's really dark. But I like the 70 to 85. Okay. My husband's more on the 70%, and I can do the 85 and be fine. I like it, you know, just to eat. But the 100%, no. It was a little harsh, not, not in something, but that's exactly why they say to eat the dark chocolate instead, because the chocolate, the antioxidants in the chocolate itself are good for you from the cacao bean and um, it's the sugar and stuff that ruins it. <laughs> hmm. And it's because it is naturally bitter. You know, it's pretty strong. So they sweeten it up. So when people tell you they love chocolate and they crave chocolate, uh -huh. I've always wondered, is it really the chocolate that they're craving or the sugar? sugar. Yeah. Especially if they won't eat dark chocolate. Oh. And dark chocolate, or chocolate in general, but dark chocolate, they say if you crave chocolate, like dark chocolate, you have a, you're low on magnesium. Dark chocolate has a lot of magnesium in it. Oh. So it's good for you that way. Hmm. Well, today was very informative. Well, good. Yes. And you even got to see black duck eggs. He and I, and you, yes. And, and the broccoli sprouts. Yep. 
and and the baked potato, day old baked potato. Day old baked potatoes. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Well, what are you going to put in your garden? I need to run the tiller one more time. So I hope to do that probably, what's today, Wednesday? I hope to get that done tomorrow. It was kind of, I needed to do it yesterday or Monday, but it was kind of cool. Mm. Well, we and I, just, I couldn't bring myself to get out there and do it in the cool. Yeah. <laughs> but it's warmed up now. and I've got something to do this afternoon, or I do it this afternoon. But um, I think tomorrow I should be able to get it tilled. And I have, I've got my tomato seeds and pepper seeds started, but I won't put those out for another probably six weeks. Okay. But I can go ahead. I've got my potatoes ready to go in and um, then I'll go get my cabbage and broccoli and such. And I can plant my peas and so there's a, and I can plant my lettuce, my carrots and radishes and Swiss chard. So I've got all that ready to go in as soon as I get the dirt ready. We've just been so rainy. I was later getting it tilled because I had to, it was just too wet. Every time that I could get out there, it was going to rain the next day. And so it's kind of put me behind. Because usually I have my potatoes in by now. I sh should have had my potatoes in the ground for two weeks by now. Mm -hmm. So hopefully I'll get it in this weekend. I'll get a good portion of it in. Well, we don't dare, I can plant now. We don't dare plant our gardens until May. Well, that's kind of when I put in um, our last frost date is April. Our average last frost date is April 15th. Oh. But we can still get frost for another week or so. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So usually the earliest I will plant tomatoes and peppers and those kind of things will be early May. Mid-May is better once it's had time to warm up the ground a little bit. Yeah. <coughs> I can plant my cucumbers and squash and stuff the last week of April. The old wives saying around here is you plant your garden on Good Friday. Oh, which is great because Good Friday is late this year. Mm -hmm. When yeah. Good Friday comes in March, <laughs> it's a little early. Yeah. <laughs> but um, that's kind of the old timers thing is they always plant their garden on Good Friday. I, I work for uh, a farmer, an ex-farmer, uh, ex and he told me that you don't plant corn until... Uh, the leaves on an oak tree are about the size of a squirrel. Squirrel, hmm. and then mm -hmm. you get corn. So. Because it, well, that makes sense because the corn rots if the soil is too damp and too cool. It'll oh. just rot instead of sprout. Uh -huh. I'd never heard of a a sign to watch for to know. That it was warm enough, but that's a pretty good that's idea. For that's for field corn, not sweet corn. Mm -hmm. I thought that was kind of interesting. Yeah, I've never heard that one before. He said his dad told him that. Hmm. There's probably some truth to it. Well, I would think there is. So, how's your hand? It's still in a cast. It's still kind of sore, but it's getting better. I can. It, I just broke one little bone right here in 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 my hand. Mm -hmm. All it takes is one little one. <laughs> and, and it's so. I mean, you don't realize how much you use. Both hands until you don't. Until you can't use that one. Have one. Exactly. How well, long do you have to keep the cast on? Don't do it. 
Don't do it. You don't yeah. recommend it. <laughs> you need two hands to plant a garden. And to go to show <laughs> yep. yeah. How long have you got to keep the cast on? For about four more weeks. Ugh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I got to have help planting mine. Well, I'm sure you'll be able to round up somebody that'll... Oh, I'm sure I will. Because you have a few more weeks before you can get started. Yes, I do. I have a couple blueberry bushes see, see, coming yeah. in the mail. Oh, yay. In a few weeks, and I've got to find somebody to plant them for me. That'll be good. Yeah. We eat a lot of blueberries around here. I like blueberries. And blueberries are one of the things I don't have any bushes for. I have strawberries, I have blackberries, I have raspberries, I have grapes, but I don't have blueberries. Yep, it sounds like we've gone gargling. Our connection must have gotten... Well, I'm going to run. I've got some work things to catch up on. I'll let you go. It was good to see you. You have a good week. Take care. Bye.